Yep. Okay. Uh, just a few more seconds. It's loading. Done. Good to go, Lord Mayor. Good to go. Members, uh, I advise a special meeting of Council of Tuesday the 6th of October uh, is now open. Um, the special meeting of Council will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transfer outside of Australia. Special meeting of Council of... Oh. And that is feedback. I don't know why. Um, Acknowledgement of country. Apologies, members, apologies. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continual importance to uh, the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Item two on the agenda, members, is apologies and leave of absence. I have an apology from Councillor Moran. I don't think I have any other apologies. No. Uh, that takes us to item three on the agenda, which is 3.1, the citywide business model charter. Um, I will just hand over briefly to uh, Director Hill. And I have a raised hand by the Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll just go to, um, to Director Hill first. I'm just checking if I can unmute you. Yes, beautiful. Yep. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you, members. And through the Lord Mayor, just uh, by way of introduction on this important item, I just did want to acknowledge the hard work of many in getting to where we are this afternoon. Um, the Citywide Business Model has been uh, an initiative that elected members asked us to explore in the 2016-2020 strategic plan. In the 2020 to 2024 plan, you've asked us to implement one. So we've heard loud and clear through industry leaders, peak groups like the Adelaide Convention Bureau, Study Adelaide, the Adelaide Business Collective, the precinct groups, um, and others who've consistently said it's time for a new model. And I think now as we come through uh, a COVID period, probably even more important than ever around how we are setting the business community up for success in the city of Adelaide. Um, we have now called the citywide business model the Adelaide um, Economic Development Agency. Um, so it says what it will do. Um, and we are looking for a more targeted and dedicated approach to how we promote this great city as a place to work, invest, play, study and visit. So hundreds of people have been involved in the consultation over the last 18 months and I'd just like to thank them on the public record um, for their input, their thoughts and their considerations as we go to the debate tonight and um, welcome, welcome the debate and welcome um, hopefully a decision um, from elected members. So thank you very much for everyone's efforts today. Thank you, Director. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just had an alternative motion. Um, and uh, with your indulgence, I'm happy to um, uh, walk members through where it's changed from the one that you circulated. Thank you. Yep. Um, uh, and so, and if, if um, governance could just uh, scroll down with me. Um, so what, what this does is... Can I, just, sorry, on, one second. Right? I'm just going to check with um, Franz. Um, Franz, did you have a, your hand was up. I've unmuted you. 
Okay, that's useful. Um, thank you. Uh, I have, I've just got to check because it's changed a little bit with regards to the sections, but in regards that I'm on the, the uh, RMMA board and that uh, I, I would have a material conflict of interest in regards to removal of the board. So therefore uh, I would use um, when we are dealing with that component, if that's okay. But I would still like to take part in the rest if that's possible. That's fine. If when we get to the resolution, if you can um, let me know perhaps which uh, points that you have a direct conflict with and we can take it in parts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, thank you. Back to you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, so it, it just, um, it adds in uh, some extras under powers and functions, which is to engage businesses within the City of Adelaide and then the second one, to promote and facilitate uh, professional development. That was the feedback that came uh, from some of our uh, business stakeholders. Um, and it also uh, amends the uh, one on uh, main streets to beef it up a little bit, because um, it just seemed a little bit strab and I know a drab and I know main streets has been a, a real focus of this council. Um, uh, regarding uh, the appointment of board members, um, uh, it expands the number of board members um, over what was originally envisaged um, to the same as what you had at Lord Mayor, um, but it also guarantees that there's a board member who's from the advisory committee, um, uh, which I've also suggested some changes to in uh, section 38.2. Um, uh, the remainder of that is the same other than uh, ensuring that at least two board members as opposed to one, at least two board members uh, must be business owners within the city of Adelaide. Um, the selection panel stuff was excellent um, and very thorough, so very glad to see that in there. Um, uh, uh, regarding the advisory committee, um, following on from the discussion at committee um, and also with businesses, I thought it necessary for us to uh, better formalise and put some rigour around the agency. So instead of the agency may establish the com a committee, it will establish. Um, uh, and, and in line with that formalisation, um, this speaks to terms of reference for the committee and that those terms of reference will be approved by council. So um, as Michelle said, it will be co-designed, the structure of the committee will be co-designed with the stakeholders, um, but then that will come back into us for us to approve um, so that we've got more sort of control over, over which stakeholders are in the tent. Um, and then also there's a clause in there about determining its board member um, uh, and that it will just have an ordinary resolution, which is just a simple majority um, once every 12 months, so you don't have a revolving door. Um, and then, um, Lord Mayor, following on from discussion with yourself, um, uh, uh, being, um, being a subsidiary, you know, it's appropriate for uh, the chairperson to be involved in the recruitment of the managing director. And so I've suggested um, uh, in a similar vein to the selection panel for the board, that there is a selection panel consisting of the Lord Mayor, the chairperson, the CEO, our CEO, and the director of growth in order to recruit the managing director. Yeah. Um, but the terms of the appointment, appointment still lie with the CEO. Um, and then the last, the last one that departs from what was circulated is um, uh, uh, basically saying that we will approve um, the funding um, at a subsequent meeting of council. So giving more time for members to uh, digest and go over all the bits and pieces, particularly I know there was interest in a lot of the sponsorship stuff um, as well. Okay, so members, I will look for a seconder. Um, so I've got Franz, I've got your hand up. I'm just Check. Oh, oh, all the hands are going everywhere. So now, Mark, you've got your hand up. I will just unmute you and then I'm going to, again, in terms of a seconder, um, I have got Franz, but I'm not sure, given that you've got a conflict of interest, that you can second. So uh, I do have you, uh, Councillor Abraham, today. So uh, I will do unmute you and I just have a look at my running order here. So, so I've got you as a second. Um, Mark, I've got you unmuted if you would like to um, speak. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just Sorry. wanted to raise one concern and that is in relation to the recruitment of the managing director. Um, it, it's highly unusual for council members to be involved in the recruitment of key personnel. 
in fact, local government provides the, it's the role of the CEO. So um, I have some concerns with that wording in that particular part of the motion. I'm wondering if there's any appetite to, to return to a normal process, which is um, where the CEO has have the authority to, to recruit and appoint that role. Would you generally involve the, um, the chairperson in the recruitment? Um, in the past, um, we haven't done so. Um, it's been a process where it's been literally as we normally recruit, our normal recruitment processes are used. And, and that is where we go through a recruitment process undertaken by our people team, shortlisted and then determined. So it would just be very unusual for... I mean, I, in terms of that, I guess I, I'm happy if you want to take me out as an elected member, but I do believe the chairperson of the new agency should be involved in the recruitment of the managing director. Yeah, look, I'll be more comfortable with that. As a, if that's a requirement, I'll be more comfortable with that than, than having council members um, on a recruitment panel because it simply doesn't accord with the, uh, the intent of the, the Act. You all right with that, Deputy Lord Mayor, with your amendment? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm fine. The, like you said, the main thing is the chairperson. So. Yeah, and Councillor Abraham Zidoe is a seconder. You okay with that? Um, <laughs> given you haven't spoken to the amendment, is there anything you wanted to add to what the conversation you just had, Dylan? Um, uh, no, no, I'll, I'll reserve my right, Lord Mayor. That's, I think it speaks for itself. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have uh, Councillor Abraham Zidoe, did you wish to speak? I've lost. I reserve my right as well. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, Councillor Martin. I'll just unmute you. Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Look, I, I can't see these amendments uh, that have been proposed by the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, but I, I did. Uh, listen intently when uh, he mentioned in the amendment that there would be at least two business representatives on the agency board. And I wondered whether he might consider a variation um, so that at least one of whom is a, a, a small business representative. Business representatives could be, you know, the chair of BHP or uh, um, anybody else. City of Adelaide. It um, says business owners, Phil, if you can't see. Can, can we email this to you so that you have a copy of it? Um, I'm not sure why you can't see it. Um, no, I can't. I'm only being shown the page. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. B. Two board members, two are business owners. Um, yep. and, and my intention... Uh, is merely that one of them be designated as a small business owner. Uh, uh, there is a substantial difference between somebody who owns, for example, a, uh, a small you know, real estate agency or something similar, and somebody who owns a large high-end retail operation. Uh, and I think that would provide some uh, uh, equity and better representation. I'll go to the mover. Such an individual on the board. Um, uh, could, sorry, could Councillor Martin suggest suggest words for it? I said oh. uh, just one moment, please. Ben, are you there? Yep, small business owner. That's satisfactory to me. Um, could you email the amendments out? Can you email that out? Councillor yeah. Donovan's just requested. Yeah, sure. All council members. To all council members, thanks. On its way, Councillor Donovan. Um, is there anything else? I'll just ask the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today if they're willing to take that variation. Um, yeah, could, could I just suggest uh, if, if, if governments just take that exact wording and just put a comma at the end of that clause instead of a full stop and just say with one being a small, with at least one, sorry, with at least one being a small business owner. And then take it out of brackets. And then, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
I think that uh, goes to the intention, Councillor Martin. Yes, it does. It does. Thank you. Councillor Abraham Zadar, are you happy to accept that variation as well? Thank you. Um, anything else, Councillor Martin, before I go to Councillor Sims? Oh, I only had a question. I'm happy to ask that at some other stage. Okay. Well, do you want to ask it now while you've got your microphone open? Yeah, sure. I, I wanted to ask uh, the administration whether, in addition to um, uh, sponsorship funding uh, from council for um, things like the festival and so on, being considered by uh, AIDA, uh, whether community and supporting grants would also fall within its, uh, its authority. Uh, CEO, did you want to answer that or would you like me to go to Director Hill? Director Hill, thanks. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you uh, for the question. Back to you, Lord Mayor. No, the answer to that is no. Okay, so it's only sponsorship uh, for um, events and activities that would normally come under that. That's correct. Sorry. If I may, um, Councillor Martin, the reason why the amendment was made to that clause to bring that report in separately was because the information requested at last committee meeting, which was on the breakdown of what made up uh, the 7.9 million um, has yet to be provided and discussed. Um, Director Hill was away last week. Um, and so we thought if that could come in separately, we can um, then work through that as a, as a council. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. Hi, Lord Mayor. Um, firstly, apologies uh, that I was a few minutes late. I got um, locked out of my computer in town hall with no internet uh, connection. So I've quickly run home. I'm set up here now. Um, but as uh, a consequence, um, I haven't seen the um, amendment. And I know you mentioned that it was going to be emailed around, but I'm not sure that I'm getting um, emails either so ah it's it's just um come through okay. so i'll have can you not see it on your screen rob i can but i don't think the whole thing is okay. there how, how does it vary from the version that you sent around so anything that is highlighted is uh, a variation um which uh, the deputy lord mayor has sent through um the rest of it that's just in red is everything that i sent through to members earlier all ah, right, so the, the yellow changes are the Deputy Lord Mayor's additions. Correct. So there's uh, a few things to add under functions and powers, which are just to um, talk to engagement and also to beef up the importance of our main streets. Um, there's the change to the board member membership, which is to make sure that we have a representative of the advisory council and the numbers are adjusted accordingly. Um, within the charter at 38.2, it's to say that the agency will establish rather than may establish, and also that the membership establishes a terms of reference, which comes back to council, um, so that, that they, we understand how they're going to um, appoint their representative on the board. Um, 29.2 was about the selection for the managing director, which was just discussed. Okay. And I think that, oh, and the very last one, my apologies, the last one is uh, resolves to consider the approval of the funding at a subsequent meeting. So that that comes in separately. So we have really good uh, line of sight to what monies will and won't be uh, going over, be transferred through a QF. Okay, so thanks very much. Members, do I have any other questions or comments? Councillor Martin. Can I be heard? You can. Oh, great, okay. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, do I understand that at this point we are commenting on the motion that is before us uh, uh, prior to voting on it? Correct. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, I do want to say a couple of things. Um, and uh, uh, they are initially, at least anyway, positive. Um, I, um, <laughs> I Give it a try. <laughs> I, do, I do acknowledge uh, the inclusion of an advisory council uh, member on the board. 
Uh, I think this gives some comfort to precinct associations, which are by and large uh, representatives of um, uh, small business in the city of Adelaide, uh, and really the only effective voice that there is. Uh, now I acknowledge that it's not necessarily going to be a precinct association person who's elected from that advisory committee, but at least it provides that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I acknowledge also um, uh, the preparedness of the Deputy Lord Mayor to accept um, the variation uh, that one of the uh, business representatives comes from a small business background. I think both of those measures will serve to keep the body in touch with um, the vast majority of businesses in this city, which are small businesses, uh, uh, businesses employing just half a dozen people. Now, um, there are some concerns that I have, and, and it would be um, uh, remiss of me not to mention them. And, and it is that um, we are, by establishing this body, uh, AIDA, um, uh, the same acronym actually is uh, Verdi's Opera, uh, but I hope this one has a happy ending. Um, uh, we are establishing in this uh, another layer of uh, bureaucracy so that matters that would have formally come to council for consideration uh, through the administration will now go through a completely different level of bureaucracy for vetting and allocation uh, by a board headed uh, by the Lord Mayor, or at least on which the Lord Mayor sits, uh, which is supported by a board, which is supported by a secretariat and uh, who knows how many staff. Uh, all we know from the CEO is that there are staffing implications. So there will be more staff um, and in my view, uh, more bureaucracy, another layer. Um, and I do have a concern that this board um, though concerned with economic matters, um, will be venturing into areas like sponsorship and particularly the arts. A and Lord Mayor, you would acknowledge, I'm sure, that a lot of artistic endeavor um, doesn't have an economic outcome. Uh, in, in fact, sometimes it's counterproductive that it, it, it has an economic outcome. It is an artistic outcome. And uh, that is sought. And in, in these circumstances, I just wonder how it's possible for an economic development agency to uh, uh, find in favour of events on their artistic merit, though they have uh, none uh, in terms of economic outcomes. And just uh, finally, uh, I worry that uh, this board will have some difficulty, uh, high powered that it is, um, uh, dealing with economic and uh, investment outcomes with millions, if not billions, to this city will have the capacity or the will to prioritise uh, the needs of Rundle Mall traders who were represented, whether satisfactorily or not, um, by its predecessor, um, which paid attention to small detail. Um, from you know, the theme of Christmas decorations to what the promotions were to be for Friday the 13th sales. Now, I, I just don't, uh, I, I can't conceive of how you can deal with that high level of detail, that uh, high functioning activity that we're expecting of this board, and at the same time, uh, get down to the tiny detail that is so important to the traders who pay a levy uh, to the city to look after them. Uh, those are my reservations. Uh, and I reiterate, I have some comfort from the amendments that have been uh, proposed. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Would you, I might ask Director Hill if he would like to um, respond to any of those uh, concerns? Director Hill. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor, and back through you. Um, thank you, Councillor Martin, for the, the commentary. Um, I just would like to reassure you through the consultation process, we've spoken to other agencies, similar agencies have been set up in other jurisdictions, both here and offshore. Um, the Wellington Regional Economic Development Agency, which is co-funded by a range of regional councils and the Wellington Council, um, Auckland um, Events and Tourism Development Agency, and also Brisbane Marketing. Brisbane Marketing is a very similar 
uh, model in the sense of there's a, there's a levy from the Queen Street Mall and then an appropriation from, from council to that body. Um, the feedback from those CEOs um, and, and a range of um, chief operating officers is um, they find there's less bureaucracy in that because the council is giving very clear direction on what it once achieved through the signing off of an annual business plan and then how that's delivered is, is run through the agency. And that tends to uh, create less bureaucracy rather than more because the agency is not caught up in the, the machinery of council operations on a day-to-day -day basis. So I can just assure you from um, the learnings that I've come across in the last few years and the people we've consulted with, um, the, the notion there is to reduce bureaucracy, not certainly not increase it. Thank you. I've got Councillor Mackey next. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, a, a quick question firstly, and, and then a brief comment. Um, is it possible to scan down uh, on the recommendation page that's that's on our screens? I uh, just wanted to check that uh, there is still what was listed in the uh, uh, version that was circulated by you, Lord Mayor, earlier today, uh, uh, at Clause 17, that uh, notes uh, that funding from Rundle Mall separate rate will be dedicated specifically for the management and marketing of, um, the, of the Rundle Mall precinct. It's, uh, I, I'm, and in, in asking that question, I note that uh, uh, as was in the previous uh, version published, uh, the um, paragraph 14 about the 2021 business plan and budget, but um, my understanding of, of the intention in the amended, uh, the augmented uh, recommendation was that we make in our, in our resolution absolutely explicit and for the benefit of the contributors to the Rundle Mall uh, um, separate rate that those funds would continue in future years to be dedicated specifically for the management and marketing of the Rundle Mall precinct. If I could get a comment from that, and then I'll just add my um, other comments. Okay. Um, Director Hill, is that unmuting? It is? Yes. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, back to you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, for the question. Absolutely. Um, the intent and the clarity provided there is around ring fencing, the, the levy paying money, for roughly the $3.8 million, which is paid for by levy payers. And that's, that's for a dedicated program of marketing and activities specific to that geographical area. Um, the current business plan for Rundle Management Authority 2021 has some very clear objectives to be delivered upon. So it would be in our intention that through the new agency that, again, that 3.8 is very clearly allocated um, to that geographical area. Uh, uh, thanks through you, Lord Mayor. Um, and, and thanks, Ian, for, um, for that reassurance. What, what, I, what I just wanted to uh, be clear about is that in the in the varied variation that was circulated earlier today, um, that the explicit noting that it that this levy will continue beyond, effectively beyond the 2021 Rundle Mall business plan and budget, uh, but that in fact in the future years when the rate is levied, that it will continue to be dedicated to. So um, perhaps I couldn't shortcut that by at 15, we could put notes that future funding from the Rundle Mall separate levy will be dedicated specifically. I think that covers off your concern. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. If um, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor and Seconder are happy to incorporate yep. that into the motion, yep. I'd be, I've got I'd be there. Yep. Um, Which was the intent of adding that in, so I some concern. Thank, no, thank you very much. Um, um, if, with your indulgence, I might just um, add my my uh, uh, comments of support. I appreciate that uh, the um, initial the impetus for this uh, predates my uh, elect recent election to council. But as a long time former trader and precinct um, uh, uh, advocate um, in in decades past, uh, that I appreciate that the uh, the the a fresh look and, and a new go at getting better at how we promote uh, and market and support our city businesses and the future economic uh, vibrancy of the city 
is uh, uh, is important and uh, should benefit from the adoption of a model that has been proven to be effective in other jurisdictions. Uh, I appreciate the uh, efforts of the Deputy Lord Mayor with his uh, variations uh, this evening that they do go further, uh, as Councillor Martins acknowledged, to um, uh, reassure perhaps uh, some um, legitimate interested stakeholders who, uh, um, who who are very keen, like we are, that this uh, that this uh, project uh, be given the best chance of success, and and so therefore I, I will be happy to support this set of uh, recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd just like to ask, perhaps by way of a question to the CEO, I'm just slightly concerned about the uh, specification of a small business uh, owner. Um, we, I'm assuming the, the, the definition of small business owner will be utilised, which is under Australian or ABS uh, statistics, it's uh, a business with tw uh, 20 or, or less uh, employees. Um, I'm just slightly worried that by making that specification, we may be precluding, uh, you might have a situation with someone who's meritorious, uh, but he runs a business of 25 or 30, that is, I guess, a medium-sized business, um, it may be precluded and you may end up casting about for someone uh, running a smaller business when you don't have uh, someone necessarily there. So, look, could the CEO just maybe, I mean, I know it's not something the CEO can ask, fact, I can ask the CEO for a factual response, but is he comfortable with that specification of a small business owner? Do you think... Do you think there will be that? There might be that outcome where we're we're casting about and there's someone not there to fill the the, the, the role when there's someone with a 25 or 30. Um, or do you think that it might be better varied uh, to be small or medium uh, business owner? Three, Lord Mayor. Look, it is true that the classification of small business is up to 20 employees. Um, however, the intent is pretty clear. If you wished to provide some room for movement, we could include small and medium sized business. That is that is a, a common term that is used. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we are looking at anything up to 20 staff would be uh, generally what we would consider small business. Well, I might, I might just put it back to the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, perhaps um, whether they, they're of the mind uh, to vary that to small or medium uh, business owner. Um, bearing in mind, we would obviously want to have a small business owner uh, there, but it, it's just that issue of forcing that that matter and precluding someone who might miss out who's got a slightly slightly bigger business. If the DLM might have a comment on that on, on a variation, um, I'm, I'm putting it up there as a, as, a, as a potential variation. I'm not. I'm, I'm in two minds about it. So. Um, I I, t I take your point, Jesse, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to decline because I think particularly if you look at people uh, that have, you know, consultancies and other firms, they're not, they're very qualified in their own right, but they're still small businesses. I don't think we'll have a trouble, have any trouble um, filling it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's um, There is one consideration that um, perhaps if I could ask whoever's got the thing to just scroll down a little bit so that I can read. See, stop, stop, stop. Um, under 16.3, um, so we've made, we've, we've noted in the recommendation that we do a selection panel to a point, but we haven't, I don't think we've put that in the charter in terms of who the selection panel comprises. So, um, so under the section that says for a maximum of three consecutive terms, if I can put in a new one, which would be 16.11, um, which in the, uh, so appointment of board members is, point, is number 16 in the charter and which finishes at 16.10. So at 16.11, uh, there would be a, a line that's called board selection panel. And then at 16.11.1, it will read the board selection panel shall comprise. Great typing there. 
and 16.11.1.1 will be three council members appointed by resolution of council. Uh, by resolution of council, uh, 16.11.1.2, the council's chief executive officer. I was just repeating it, but putting it in the charter, clearly that that's actually how we appoint board members. And 16.11.1.3 uh, is the council's director responsible for economic development. as appointed by the Chief Executive Officer. And so that's just making it really clear in the charter how the board appointments work. Are you okay with that, Dealing? Um, could, could, very, very minor thing, but I just, I'm conscious this is being gazetted. Just in line with the formatting, which is elsewhere in the document, yep. instead of 16.11.1.1, um, uh, could we have they 16... just be three things? A, yeah, a, no, A, B, C. Uh, yep, so 16 ab point, absolutely. Yep. Sixteen eleven point one A, and then yep. B, and then C. Yeah. I, I just noticed that after three numbers, it went to letters. I know it's just like more. Yep. Thank you. I love a good format. Um, and, and and can I just ask the CEO? I'm just oh, sorry. I'm conscious that we've we've referred to the the growth director multiple times in this, and the language there is different. Um, does the CEO feel that the 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 rest of the motion, which talks about uh, uh, grammar and syntax and stuff, does he feel that the, the rest of the motion gives him the ability to make those uniform? Because I'd hate for there to be confusion at some point due to a drafting error. Yeah, That's true. Council apostrophe s, yes, please. Real of my, now my, my preference would be um, wherever you've got um, the director responsible for economic development, it should be the CEO or delegate, and then I can appoint whoever I consider responsible um, in, those, in those circumstances. The same with the recruitment of the managing director role, it should be CEO or delegate. Um, that would be my preference, and then that, that means that there is no complication. Would it be and or delegate if we want more than one, though? Because... Yeah, it could be and or, that would be fine. So under B, it would be the council's uh, chief executive officer and or delegate. That will cover it off. Yeah, and then you wouldn't need C. And then you don't need C. Great. And then also in the recruitment of the, um, of the managing director role, it would be the same, same wording would be better. Okay, that was at, mm, I've lost that one. Uh, yeah, that one. And or delegate. Yep. Thank you. Uh, DLM, are you happy with that? Yeah, could we just say and or their delegate? Sorry. That? Uh, and or yep, their, their yeah. delegate. Yeah. Yep, thank yep. you. Yeah, and, and sorry, Kylie, just back down there. Could you, uh, you've just struck out the panel members will be the Lord Mayor. Could you just unstrike the? So it's the chairman. Correct. Sorry, we're getting a bit ridiculous now. <laughs> no, no, it's pedantic. It's going, going to be gazetted. It needs to be right. Okay, so members, um, sorry, I don't, I don't think there's anything else that um, I might just have one quick moment just to see if there was anything else that needs to be in terms of um, data. I think um, on point number three, if I could just go to point three uh, there, uh, resolves to amend the draft charter, because it's still draft, if I could add the word draft, please. Um, and after charter, if I could add the words in attachment A to item 3.1. So that we are referring to the attachment. Uh, I'm just checking if there's any other places that we are referring to attachments 
and I think we're good. Are you happy with those very slight amendments, Deputy Lord Mayor? Yep, yep, I think they're great. Okay, members, I'm going to ask for any more discussion, questions, comments, and if not, I'll go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, just very, very briefly, Lord Mayor, I just want to thank everyone that's been involved um, in the drafting of this. Uh, you know, I've learned that it's something that's been uh, thought about for a couple of decades. Um, and uh, I think it's an incredibly worthy reform. Um, and I'd also, uh, I don't know if any of them are listening, but I want to thank the businesses that have been involved um, and pushing this, uh, particularly um, uh, the Adelaide Business Collective and their stakeholders, because I think um, they're the ones that have really got uh, a lot of people excited about the vision of what this can become. And then once you combine that with the immense expertise that we have within the city of Adelaide, um, uh, mash it all together uh, and you get what's in front of us. And, and, and it's very, very exciting to see what can happen. And I'm really pleased that um, we've had some positive comments about, about this amendment and formalizing the committee structure. Um, as I've said before, you know, we need to be doing our bit to support our volunteer business groups um, and ensuring that they have the uh, uh, resources to professionalise their work. And by working hand in glove with this agency, I very much hope that they'll be able to get the support that they need to continue delivering for their precincts. Um, uh, because, you know, commerce commerce is, as, as uh, Councillor Martin said, you know, a, a large part of commerce is local. But then there's the bigger picture stuff as well. I'm really hopeful that with a skills-based board on top um, and also the advisory committee formalised there and with representation on the board, we can ensure that we cover all bases. Um, so that we've got the expertise in the agency headed up by its managing director, um, the skills and experience on the board overseeing that, but also not losing sight of how, how it affects businesses on the ground and at the coalface um, uh, by ensuring we keep in touch through that committee as well. So again, I just wanna thank everyone involved and and commend the speed with which the administration has uh, pulled this together, particularly over the last um, few months. Uh, it was only, we only just ratified it in our strategic plan. I'm conscious it was in the other strategic plan as well, but um, uh, from where, where it was when we came to council to where it is now, um, I, I think it's it's come leaps and bounds. Um, so, so thank you. Thank you. Before we go to the vote, I am actually just going back to Councillor Canole. I've just unmuted you, Councillor. Oh, we'll try again. You're still mute, so I'll, you need to press your... There we go. Oh, um, so in that case, I, I believe it's uh, in uh, uh, part eight that I have an actual uh, uh, material conflict of interest in regards to the RMMA board. Okay, no. let me just double check part eight. Uh, you mean part nine? Part nine, is it, with, for the removal of the board? Yeah, that's part nine. Okay, so that's part uh, nine. Point, point number nine. So yeah. uh, members will take it in parts, with, uh, so all parts with the exception of point nine. Um, I'll, by, by actual hand, uh, those in favour? Thank you, those against? Thank you, that is carried. Deputy Lord Mayor. Could we have that? Uh, could we have a division on that, Lord Mayor? Or was that Thank unanimous? Thank you. Rudy, division's been called. Division's being called, members. Um, can you please uh, raise your hand for those in favour? Until your name's called. Yep, until your name's called. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abrahim Zadeh, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Sims, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Ho and Councillor Kira. Thank you. Thank you, members. I now will ask to vote on part nine, uh, or I, uh, point number nine. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Members, that now takes us to, um, as per the, hmm, I've lost which part it is now. Um, I 
I'm now going to actually look at the selection panel. Uh, we have approved the procedural through the recommendation. So I will now look to members for uh, three nominations from the floor. Deputy Lord, oh, wow, my screen just went nuts. Uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, I muted you by mistake. Could you unmute? There we go. Oh, that's right. I'd just like to nominate uh, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Mackey. Um, Rudy, could you please take a, a, open all the microphones just for a minute? Thank you. I got muted. Um, can we unmute everyone, please, Rudy? Is everybody able to unmute themselves? Yep, that's great. Um, so, uh, Deputy Lord. Okay, don't know what's going on here. I keep getting muted. If everybody could just stay unmuted for the next few. Could, could I please could I please see the motion on on the screen? Uh, no, the, there was a recommendation within the motion that we have just passed, uh, which says appoints three council members to form part of. Now looking for that was the um, procedural. I'm now looking for three nominations, and I did have a nomination from the deputy lord mayor for Councillor Mackey. Councillor Mackey, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, can I nominate uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor? Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Councillor... Councillor Sims, I don't know why they've gone mute again. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? Well, that's, that's very generous of Councillor Simmons, but I decline it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm sorry, I also said Councillor Kouros, but I'm just conscious you didn't seek her consent, so I don't, I'm not sure if you missed oh, that. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Sorry, my apologies. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sims, you had your hand up? Yes, um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Donovan. I'm just conscious Councillor um, Hyde is on so many committees, Lord Mayor. I might be very busy. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? I do. Thank you. Uh, are there any further nominations? Councillor Kouros? I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, do you accept the nomination? Uh, very delighted, but no, thank you. Okay. Uh, members, any other nominations? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, is your hand up from before? Yep. Okay. So, uh, members, uh, we have four nominations for three positions, which means we go to a ballot. I don't know how to do a ballot on Zoom, but I'm hoping Rudy does. Rudy, over to you. Indeed. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. So um, you will see the instant messaging functionality in the uh, participants uh, window of Zoom. If you could send uh, your three uh, nominated um, members through to me by instant message, I'll then uh, add them up and then uh, advise the outcome of that because okay. we don't have the ballot functionality on Zoom at the moment. Does everybody understand what that is? You mean through chat? Yep. Yes, that's right. So um, on Zoom, you'll find the participants uh, window where you can see all members. Oh, yes, at the bottom of that is a okay. uh, instant messaging functionality. Okay, so through chat members, make sure that it is just to Rudy, otherwise it will go to everybody in the meeting. Um, so we'll say Rudy Deco oh, yeah. privately. Yes, Councillor Karras. Sorry, can, uh, can we have it? Uh, somewhere here with the people nominated again. Can so you've nominated it? Greg Mackey, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Donovan. I will send that to everybody in the 
meeting. Do we do them order of preference, Lord Mayor, or just simply three names? So you just do three. Three names. Okay. Okay. Sandy, you've sent yours to everybody. Yeah, no, no, these, I'm actually telling you who is actually being nominated. Oh, right, okay. Oh, thank you. No, I wasn't doing that. Just so that you've got it in front of you, okay? I'm the Deputy Lord Mayor too, he's on the list yeah. as well. So, um, just three, thank you. Lord Mayor, if I could just ask, those who've accepted nomination, do we also participate? Yes, you do. Everybody Thank votes. You. Thanks for the question, Greg. So, yes, members, you vote. Now, it might take us a short while. Lord Mayor, would it be possible for Rudy just to confirm if everybody's voted? Yes, I will uh, do that as well. Um, Thanks, Rudy. Uh, so obviously when we get come back with the three, uh, then those three have to excuse themselves while we vote because the position will be renumerated. So you have to exclude yourself. But we'll get to that in a minute. The, the selection panel is remunerated, Lord Mayor. Oh, not the selection panel. My, my apologies. I know. Yeah. It must be Tuesday after a long weekend. No, they are not. Mm. They, are, they are remunerated with love and affection. That's what I was about to say, because ACMA some, was a little bit... Some water, water and possibly a biscuit and a cup of tea. Do I have to declare that? Uh, no. No, it will come out of my pocket. It will be fine. Sorry. I can sing. No, I won't. A little bit of music. Oh, and sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm sure you're um, uh, keeping time, but I'm just conscious we have to open committee. We do. I'm hoping that Mr. Deco will have something within a minute or two. We have four minutes yep. to, oh, sorry. to close this if we open. <laughs> no it's pressure. Really. Coming in, it's a small window here, so I'm doing my bit, very best. I know, I know. Apologies. No pressure, Rudy. <laughs> what will you um, do if the bells ring, Alex? Will we lose you? This I'm in Adelaide. Another few minutes. He's in his office. Um, perhaps what we could do in the interim, because I want to get this right, and uh, they're coming, they're still coming through as we speak. Um, what we might do is indeed um, open the other one and then yep. come back if that's okay. All right, so uh, members, I need a mover to close the meeting. Adjourn. The, adjourn the meeting, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, second to Councillor Sims. Members all in favour? Uh, all against, that is carried. The meeting yep. is closed. Is it possible to get five minutes uh, of a break at this juncture? Uh, I now. think actually, mm -hmm. Because we have to open the other meeting by six o'clock, we might have to open that meeting, adjourn that meeting, and then yes. we can have a short break. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, yes, if I've got indication from governance that we're good to go, may I? We're still recording. Yes. That's yep. fine, okay. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, uh, Fantastic. Thank you, members. As there is a quorum, I'll declare them. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present. Um, uh, and with that, I'll seek a mover and seconder that we do adjourn this meeting uh, until the conclusion of the uh, current special meeting of the council. Thank you, Lord Mayor, second and Councillor Kouros. Any discussion members? All those in favour, those against, uh, that is carried. 
Uh, so we will have a, a five minute adjournment before I reopen the meeting, at which point I'm sure Mr. Decker has counted. So members, uh, meet you back here in five minutes. Members, um, I will at 6.05, I'll re, sorry, 6.06, I'll reopen the council meeting of Tuesday the 6th of October. Um, we have just voted for three members of the selection panel. Uh, the nominations were Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Donovan. Um, Rudy, what have we got? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. So the successful nominees are Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Kouros. And I can confirm that all members present have voted for those. Great. Um, I, so I mean, with that, have expressed votes, sorry. <laughs> great, yep. thank you. So I need uh, a mover from the floor that those three councillors be... Uh, endorsed as the as our selection panel so if i could have a move from the floor please uh thank you councillor knoll oh i've got hands up everywhere here we go councillor knoll and uh, and a seconder phil are you seconding councillor nope. martin are you seconding no uh councillor abraham today are you seconding Yes, Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? No, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? No, uh, members, uh, if not, go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. If I can get you to unmute to sum up, please, Councillor Knoll. I'm done. Thank you, members, for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Members, that concludes business for our special council meeting of Tuesday 6th of October. Um, I will now close the meeting and hand over to the Deputy Lord Mayor to reopen our committee meeting. Thank you, members. Thank you, Lord Mayor and um, uh, councillors. We uh, I declare this meeting of the committee reopened at 6.08 p.m. Um, and we were at item two, apologies and leave of absence, no apologies have been provided to me. Um, we'll move to three, confirmation of the minutes. I seek a mover and a second uh, to confirm that they're sure and accurate record. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Apologies, Deputy Lord Mayor. We did get a, uh, a um, apologies from Councillor Moran for this evening. Oh, so sorry. That was yeah, for sorry, council and sorry. committee. Yes. Not, not on my notes, but yes, yes, we did. Um, if that can please be recorded. Um, and uh, yes, I'll move on to confirmation of the minutes. Seek a mover and a second for the minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Seconded by uh, Councillor Noel. Any discussion, members? No, we put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. We have no presentations uh, this evening. Um, and so we'll go straight to. 51 Golden Wattle Park Community Land Management Plan and Building Concept uh, members. Any questions on this one? I'm sorry, I'll just bring up my participants thing so I can see your hands go up. Um, no hand, oh, one hand has gone up. Thank you, Phil. Could I just check, DLM, that you uh, have now, the hosting has now transferred over to you? Have you uh, got... it, it hasn't as yet, Rudy, if you're able to do that so I can... Um, so I just went to unmute Phil and the button disappeared. Okay, we'll thank do that you. Right now. Thanks. There we go. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Um, look, a, a couple of questions for the administration. I, I'm. Uh, I did have it, and I've lost it now. Can you tell me the current footprint um, for the building? that exists uh, on uh, the site at the moment, that's on uh, uh, the um, uh, Golden Bottle uh, uh, part. Sorry, directors, I'll just try and find you on my screen first. You've disappeared. Um, okay, there you are. Oh, sorry, Rudy, I seem to have lost my hosting privileges. Okay. I 
can't unmute them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, through, through the chair, paragraph 14, um, the existing building's 390 square meters. Okay, thank you. Thank you, I couldn't find it. Um, and the new footprint is 465. Um, and so that represents about a 20% increase, is that correct? Um, I haven't worked out the percentage, but um, yes, the proposed um, footprint is 465. And, and could you tell me what the um, the floor space is for the current building and what it will be in the proposed building? Through the chair, so it's 390 square meters for the current building. So the floor area will be slightly less than that. What's proposed is 465 square meters. That was improved. And the ground floor area is around 465 proposed. Um, and the footprint is 500 square meters on that design that's currently proposed. So hang on, 500 square meters on uh, the footprint, 500 square meters the uh, floor space 465 for the ground floor and for the second story? Uh, so the second story is around 800 square metres on that proposal. Uh, that's in addition to the 465 ground? Correct, because the approval was for ground footprint and not total floor area. Okay, so am I correct in saying we're talking about 1,200 square metres of floor space? Uh, through the chair, the, potentially the concept could be that big, but we are recommending that it be reduced. Okay, so uh, um, uh, could I ask the administration, why are we permitting a 20% growth in um, the footprint when we're actually providing a 200% increase in floor space? or approving that? Uh, through the chair, we're recommending that the um, building come back to APLA and council for further consideration. Uh, I didn't see that. Um, uh, paragraph where is that? 25. Okay, but it's not in the recommendation to go to council. It's not. Okay. Sorry, um, four point uh, para four talks to the design intent will be tabled and the revised building concept. We're asking council to know that. I uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just can't see that it actually says that. But that's the administration's intent that, that, that the building size should come down. Yes, that's correct. Has the administration provided any guidance to um, um, the organization about what size that should be? Only the previous resolution, 465. We haven't got to a level of design yet. Okay. Okay, well, that's a, a very substantial increase in floor space. Um, um, the recommendation also calls for a letter of support from the Lord Mayor um, to be used by the lessee in securing funding. What, what does that entail? 
it, it, for example, I'm looking uh, to, to understand whether that includes any commitment from council in any respect for this, uh, this undertaking? Uh, it would only um, offer support um, in relation uh, to anything that's already endorsed or currently endorsed by Appland Council. It wouldn't commit, it wouldn't pre-commit um, council to anything. Okay, and, and uh, it, it would endorse, for example, the proposed footprint of 465 square metres, or would it say uh, less than, or we're seeking to reduce it, or it, it would just say we support the plan submitted? The letter would um, outline at a high level the intent of the CLNP um, and whatever council endorses or has previously endorsed in relation to that area. Thank you. And just one final question in relation to the uh, CLNP. Oh, um, no, I'll, I'll leave the, uh, the matter of the car parking into a council. Um, but in relation to the showground contract, uh, can the administration remind me again, when does that contract uh, for the use of Park 21 expire? Um, I don't have the exact um, dates with me, but we think we're about halfway through that, councillor, so another six, seven years to go. But I, I'll need to take that on notice and provide it in advance of next week's council meeting. Would you? Yes, I think it's about 20, from memory, uh, 2023, 20, 24. As I said, I don't have that to hand. Okay, no, no, that's fine. I, I uh, accept that. Um, can I ask then, why didn't the administration, given the likelihood that the community land management plan will extend um, well into the next decade or the coming decade, why didn't the community land management plan contemplate what would happen to that contract, which has always been controversial? Um, is there a reason it's, it's not uh, proposed that, for example, um, the administration recommends that when it comes up for review, it be renewed, or the administration's recommendation is that we should uh, notify um, uh, the show society that we are likely to terminate it. Like, why, why is there nothing that it's silent in that, in that sense? Through the chair, so the life of a community land management plan under the legislation is five years. So that the, this um, iteration of the plan will essentially expire at the same time that the agreement will expire with the Royal Show. Okay, so um, wouldn't we want to give them some notice of what our intention was rather than just both rocking up to the date? Uh, with no understanding of what's ahead? That sounds really sensible, councillor, so I'm sure that's what we'll be doing in future years. Okay, thank you. It's necessary that the CLMP needs to speak to how that might look and feel? Um, well, we have in, in other community land management plans uh, set for ourselves goals um, and in fact, even the, the one where the other controversial one we're considering in respect of the Adelaide Oval um, uh, talks about our aspirations in regard to land preservation of existing gardens and so forth uh, and usage and so on. And yet this one doesn't address what is, um, you know, the elephant in the room. But anyway, look, I hear what you said. 
Oh, sorry. Thanks, Claire. And the CLMP does reference um, the agreement uh, with the Royal Adelaide Show. Um, yep. So it does talk to that and talks about minimising the impact of car parking. It doesn't talk to, you know, what happens after the agreement, you're correct. Yep, yeah, that's the point that uh, I was uh, seeking clarification on, but thank you. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Uh, members, any further uh, questions or no? No. Okay, we'll move on to uh, 5 2, which is the 2021 22 Black Spot nominations. And we have our Associate Director of Infrastructure here to answer questions uh, on that. Um, members, uh, please raise your hand if you wish electronically, if you wish to ask questions or comment on this report. Thanks, Phil. Uh, look, just a, um, uh, a quick comment. It's just uh, wonderful that uh, that site of Montefiore has been chosen. Um, but look, I, I am a little bit troubled, Chair. Um, not, not only about one aspect of this, but um, we have mentioned before uh, our concern that you are chairing this meeting out of the offices of um, a member of federal parliament. And this is a matter concerning very likely that very member of federal parliament at some stage in the future. Well, and actually I'll stop you there, uh, Councillor Martin, because it actually doesn't. Um, uh, the way that the black spots work is they are determined by a committee and there, there are very many people that sit uh, on that committee, so uh, none of which are my employer. So, and not that there are conflicts of interest that take place at committee, because of course we don't make decisions here, um, but if my employer ever were to appear on that committee, um, I would then be declaring a, a at least a perceived conflict of interest um, at council. And I think it would be perceived because there is no material benefit for me or them in participating in that discussion. So uh, look, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Do you have questions around the content of the report, Councillor yeah, 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 Yes, I, I do. Uh, um, but before you leave it there, the issue is that that member of federal parliament will vote on this. There will be a vote. A no, there will not be a vote, vote Councillor Martin. Look, I, I respect that you're very much across your local government procedure, but you are not across uh, the procedure of the House of Representatives um, or the way that departments work or in the way that their committees work. Um, uh, so, uh, again, we'll leave it there because what you're commenting on is not actually relevant to the contents of the report. Good on you for trying it on. No, no, look, I, I, I but, am genuinely... But it's not relevant in the slightest. I am genuinely concerned. And, uh, and look, I mean no offence. And if she's listening, uh, please convey my apologies to uh, Ms Flint. But um, uh, it does seem to me to be a problem. But yes, I do have a question. Um, uh, the administration uh, has asked us to rescind the resolution uh, from the meeting of 2019, noting that this priority list, which has always come to council, uh, will be brought to council for approval. So that means, in effect, uh, it doesn't come to council. Sorry, directors, your um, your camera's off. Are we able to turn that on, please? Yeah. Uh, through the chair, sorry, the uh, audio cut out at the back end of that question from Councillor Martin. Oh, Councillor, can you please repeat your question? Yes. Um, the second item in the recommendation effectively rescinds the resolution of council in April 2019 that the annual priority list would be brought to council for approval. Um, I am reading that to suggest that the chief executive, the administration does not want the elected body involved in this process anymore. Is that correct? 
uh, through the chair, the, the purpose of that rescission is purely to do with item five in the report, which is around the timing. Uh, the timing for black spot funding through the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, uh, State Government uh, is to uh, have been changed, which means we've now got less than 12 week period to uh, do an assessment, um, undertake a full review, potentially concept drawings, full cost estimates, and then enter into the council uh, report process, which is about a month from, get, from beginning uh, to council uh, decision, which just unfortunately doesn't give us enough time to submit a black spot funding uh, project. And then obviously we have the potential to lose out on uh, valuable uh, uh, grant funding. Well, look, I understand that. And uh, that's a, a very good explanation, but if, um, it is also proposed at four that future communication to elected members for nominations will be undertaken via e-news. Doesn't that mean that the administration has taken over the process and the elected body is only a part of the process in so much as it will receive advice about what the administration has decided via e-news? Uh, through the chair, to a certain extent, that is correct. It is actually ultra-virus in any case for council to make decisions around traffic impacts and uh, traffic uh, uh, related uh, items. So uh, technically that is the case. So these, this list was brought to council traditionally uh, with enough time to, as a, as a courtesy, uh, as what the future program was in regard to, uh, I suppose, uh, providing advice to council around a future budget and, and what uh, budget items would be put into the next year's uh, finances. So we believe that uh, the actual technical decision making will be uh, will stay with administration and the uh, future funding can be updated to councillors through the new news. Um, and how would a councillor who, who was happy to accept your advice in respect of this financial year but was uh, interested in making sure that this matter came before the elected body in future years, amend this motion to ensure that happened? Uh, that is quite difficult. And I suppose the purpose of the report, um, because the traffic statistics get updated annually and we only get those uh, traffic impact updates in July each year, to make the assessments and then get back to council, it, it is very difficult to put all that together uh, in time for council. I see. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims, I think you're unmuted already. Yeah. Oh, thanks, um, Chair. Uh, look, um, further to Councillor Martin's Point. I, I do want to express my concern uh, around you chairing the meeting from a member of Parliament's office. Mm. I don't Sims, think it, it's Councilor a good. Sims, I don't. Sims, I'm going to mute you because uh, the discussion is degenerating, and I see that you've taken Phil's bait. And look, that's that's your prerogative. But I'm the one chairing this meeting, and I will say to you now, it's what I say offline. It's what I've said publicly that if there is a conflict of interest, I will declare that conflict of interest. It is not the place. It is not the place for other elected members to levy accusations around conflicts of interest and what they perceive others' conflicts of interest to be. It is the purview solely of that elected member who may or may not have a conflict to assess, determine, and then declare that conflict if it exists. That's, that is plain and simple how it, how it operates. But your conflict's on show be clear, I never accused you of having a conflict. Well, of then there is nothing, there never, is no discussion. Never suggested that. I, I, I'm just pointing out that I think it, it's not a, a great look. Members, are there any other points that wish to be made about the content as opposed to ad hominem attacks on their fellow councillors? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Unfortunately, my, um, my, my, I can't do the raise the hand thing. I don't know why. Um, I, I'm just going back to uh, what uh, uh, Matthew Morrissey just said. Um, 
in terms of council approvals. Um, we can call a special meeting at any time. I don't actually think that timing um, bears any sort of real difference in terms of, unless I'm missing something, but if it's simply a timing method, uh, mess, um, uh, problem. Uh, we we know that we have, and we often do, as we did tonight, call special meetings when when and if we need to, and therefore, if there is a problem with the black spot uh, annual review, uh, surely we could just bring it in when it's ready. So, CEO, is that not true? Yeah, through your Lord Mayor. Look, it is true to say that we can call special meetings as and when required. Um, I guess the intent of the administration was to streamline the process. Um, however, if there is a political desire to have a process of approval, um, then that can be accommodated as it has been in the past, no doubt. That's, That's it for me. Thing. It's just, it's just, it's always come through for approval, and I don't actually understand why all of a sudden it doesn't need to. I think this is information that, as a council, uh, we want to be across and in the detail that we're given. And as I'm quite aware, there's a, a lot of members that don't read their e news or miss their e news, and I think that um, it's at a high enough level that the recommendations should come back through council. Matthew, did you wish to comment? Uh, thank you, through the chair. Just to, to clarify, the list um, uh, of projects that come through come through from statistical data from uh, the department. So we actually don't choose that list. Um, that list is provided to us. We then do an assessment around the costing of what those and potential uh, design outcomes to re remedy those concerns and then submit them for funding. Uh, what we submit and what we get are also two different things. So what we actually put forward, we may not actually receive funding for. So the list is somewhat out of our control. It's based on statistical data. So even though we, we can provide that list to, to the chamber, um, it, it is not our list. Uh, it is, is the list of the department. Okay. Um, members, any other points? No, I, I might just I might just pick up on those comments. Um, uh, that yes, it, when when looking when looking at this, it does it does irk councillors that they may be not as involved in the decision making process. However, um, I'm conscious that the the unlike unlike some other grants where decisions can be made this this one is made uh, purely based on statistics like you said matt um and it's made uh, on a on a needs basis and on a risk basis um and it's uh, it's in those um terms that the program is administered so as an elected member i actually have no issue um uh, would like to be informed at all times um and kept up to date with reports but um uh, i uh, there, there there is no put it this way I do not believe there is a benefit that this body can offer when it comes to this, because at the end of the day, our opinions um, as elected members do not matter as purely the statistics that matter is my read of it. Um, and is in fact, my knowledge of how the scheme operates. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I take, I take your point, but um, the simple fact is that in years gone by in the previous term of council, for example, there was a, a, a view among councillors that particular projects were worthier than others and, and that those opinions were voiced and pressure was put on the state government to include certain items in there. And one of those I remember about which members in a previous council expressed concern was the West Terrace intersection um, uh, near uh, Adelaide High School. Now, it may not have brought the best outcome immediately, but because it was brought into the, the council, it was on the radar of councillors and was the subject of separate lobbying attempts on the part of councillors and concerted lobbying by the council. I, I think it has uh, at times a place for councillors to be able to express a view based on the information that's presented to them. And if the matter doesn't come to council, then there's just no opportunity to do that. 
Very fair. Okay. Any other comments, members? No, thank you, Matthew. We will now go on to 5.3 Community Services Southwest City, uh, which is the community centre there. Uh, we have Lisa um, with us. Uh, I'll open this up. Members, if you could put your electronic hands up. Must be at least a couple. No. What are we doing? Uh, we're on the Southwest Community Centre. Yeah, but what are we doing? Uh, we're asking questions about the report. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. But I've got I've got Councillor Knowles' hand up. So, yep. Yeah, I'll just look through the report. Obviously, uh, administration has put option one as the the one most desired. Now, we've had a few uh, obviously community meetings and things like that, and also representations from. Uh, yeah. um, now, uh, I mean, we have have we been looking for. Uh, suitable premises uh, based on, on the sort of criteria that they talk about, which is accessibility for bus, bus stops and things like that as well, given that um, the minor works building, et cetera, is, is quite difficult to get to, et cetera, and also the overall footprint is quite small for activities and that has limited activities. Just unmute and directors, if you could put your, um, thank you. Uh, thank you through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, since the owner of the building um, confirmed the end of the lease date, we've certainly been looking uh, for buildings within the um, southwest corner and within the boundaries um, that the community have made clear is um, acceptable to them. So in this, will that mean that, uh, I mean, I, I take it there is uh, um, nothing that we can have a look at yet that is in that sort of realm or, or that, that they have sort of said that would be suitable for all the all the activities that they've got and we're looking at the minor works at this time uh, to tide us over or uh, is that uh, how the administration sees that we're going to um, you know that this will be the place that you would expect them to stay What we're looking for tonight uh, through the uh, presiding member is some direction from uh, council um, as to which option you'd like us to pursue. Obviously, as you've noted, we have recommended an option, but if uh, members wish us to pursue a lease um, arrangement, then obviously that will guide us in a different direction than if you're requiring us to purchase a property. Um, so depending on which direction, um, Council endorsed next week. That will then guide the type of premises that we would be pursuing on behalf of the community. Thank you. Okay, members. Oops, sorry. I'll get there. Uh, Councillor Martin, your hand was up first, but I accidentally put it down. Thank you. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm here. Am I able yes. to speak? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Um, look, can I ask the administration? I, I had the very firm impression that uh, the majority of respondents were consulted about this and responded by saying they wanted something west of Morford Street, not east of Morford Street, uh, and that they preferred a new site. Um, uh, that is a purchased property. Is, is that correct? Um, the full um, engagement report is, a, is attached um, to the report. Yep. Um, and certainly um, the um, Southwest community group itself made it very clear of what their expectations were. Um, but there are other comments within that um, community engagement that do talk to, um, you know, uh, not necessarily having um, the same views. So there was interest in pursuing a different site altogether, potentially partnering with other groups within the vicinity to co-locate. Um, and um, yeah, so the full consultation details there. 
Okay, so, uh, and the administration has recommended relocating to the Minor Works Building, um, uh, which is uh, just behind the Central Market rather than uh, right down in the Southwest. Um, is it proposed by the administration that the entire minor works building, ground floor and first floor would be turned over or just the ground floor? And what impact would that have on the agreements and understandings of the residents of the Ergo apartments, um, who I seem to recall were attracted to that site um, with the offer of the use of the minor works building as a, uh, a facility they could use? Uh, through the presiding member, uh, no formal engagement has been um, undertaken with residents within Ergo. Um, if council next week asks us to pursue that as an option, obviously um, we would start that process. And if there is anything, um, any stumbling blocks or any mechanism that got in the way of that, we would obviously bring that back to council. Um, and in terms of the building itself, we'd be proposing that both floors would be uh, provided to the um, Southwest Community Centre. Uh, I, um, would it be wrong of me uh, to think that this has been selected because it's the cheapest proposal of the lot? Uh, not necessarily, but that hasn't gone unnoticed by administration, who's obviously been tasked with trying to find $20 million worth in general operation savings. Um, I think um, my um, approach has been there's an underutilised council building that's um, in the vicinity. It's not ideal in terms of location. It's a heritage building. It's been... Um, uh, fit it out to make sure it's compliant with full community use. It's underused and it seemed like an um, opportune time to see whether there was appetite um, to get better use from that um, site. So um, in, you know, previously, if we were in full financial um, rolling in the dollars, then I may not have recommended or sought that out as an option. I think at this point when there's an underused um, asset sitting there that could be used as a community centre, um, I thought it appropriate to certainly look at it closely. And um, can I confirm then that if this were accepted, it is a permanent solution. It would be unlikely that the administration would go to the communities uh, and say at some stage in the future, whether that's two years, five years, Whatever, look, sorry guys, we need the building. That hadn't um, been a, a thought that crossed my mind, Councillor. It would be a um, Southwest Community Centre fully staffed, run out of the um, minor works building. Okay, and just one final uh, question. Um, is it proposed that any of the land around the minor works building would be allocated to the community centre for, as in the case of other community centres like in North Adelaide, vegetable growing and the like? Hasn't been considered at this time. Um, oh, you've gone into the dark with that. Um, well, some say I've never emerged, but anyway. Um, certainly, um, there's um, community gardens uh, within the South Parklands, and um, you know, if there was any appetite to um, expand or um, any sort of community garden, we work very closely with the um, surrounding uh, residents to make sure that those gardens are set up for su success. But there's been no conversation at this point to. Um, allocate any space outside the mine of works building for community gardens. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Chair. I just have a couple of comments regarding points that are absent from the report, if I may. 
I will take that as a yes. yes. Um, so the I think as the deputy CEO just mentioned, the minor works building, which has been recommended as the first option, um, is underutilized. But I think it's really important that when we get to the consideration at council next week, we disentangle the fact that there's an underutilized building from the needs of the Southwest Community Centre. Um, and clearly what came out of the consultation is that the South, the minor works building is not fit for purpose. Um, and just one example of that is the Chinese Welfare Association who utilize that building frequently and would have to be split over two levels and would possibly still not fit in well um, if they were to be using a building like the, the minor works building. So I think we need to be really clear that we're disentangling what's needed for this community resource and what may be available in an empty building that's sitting somewhere. Also, I think the fact what's not included in the report is that the Southwest Community Centre, or, or perhaps what's not highlighted sufficiently, is that the Southwest Community Centre came into creation because of the efforts of the Southwest community and specifically those that are west of Morfitt Street. So, and, and that continues to this day with huge volunteer hours coming from residents and locals who live in that area. So to look at a building like the Minor Works building that is um, located not only in an area that's hard to get to and hard to find, but also not in that key area, I think makes it not fit for purpose, um, which I think should be included within the report. And as is included in the report, um, the current low interest rates, where we to look at purchase and where we to look at, for example, the price that was purchased of the Southwest Community Centre by the most recent buyer, we would actually be looking at half the current lease rate. So we'd be looking at probably less than $30,000 per annum with the current low interest rates had we purchased that building. So um, without entering into the debate, I think it's important that we consider not making a second mistake by not investing. And in fact, we look at something we can invest in long term that's going to be fit to purpose, particularly given we're looking at a, um, a, a hopeful increase in the residential density. So just those couple of things that I think are missing from the report, but I appreciate that uh, administration um, went to great lengths to uh, try and pull together all of that information for us. And for that, I am very appreciative. Thanks, Helen. Um, members, any further points? Councillor Ho, just remember to use your electronic hand. Yeah, just a uh, question to ask though, like, I mean, whether or not the minor works building have any kitchen facilities. Directors? Uh, yeah, yes, it does, Councillor. All right, thanks. Thanks, Councillor Ho. Um, there are no other hands up, but I might just ask a, a, a question of clarity um, of the directors. In uh, 19, at the report, um, looking at option one, it talks about risks. Um, and it says the first risk, it says there is evidence from the consultation that some members of the community do not prefer this option, um, notwithstanding that some members may be a mischaracterization, but um, Am I, am I correct in, in sort of reading between the lines there and in, in surmising that the risk really, I mean, the, the, the risk that's actually being identified there is that we'll move it to the minor works building and the community that currently use the Southwest Community Centre will not use a, a, a community centre in the minor works building? Well, I can't answer on behalf of the community whether they would refuse to use it, um, but um, we're just drawing attention to those members that may not have been involved um, in the consultation process, that there are um, members of the Southwest community that do not um, support that option. Okay, but it's, but it's been outlined as it, It's been outlined as a risk, though. What, what, what is the risk that, that comes from it? I mean, it's the the administration is surely not concerned about reputational damage for us. Um, that wouldn't be a, a, a worthy risk to put in there. So, is is the risk that that people may not use it? Is that what's been identified? Or 
like when looking at the user profile, the consultation, et cetera, et cetera. That's a risk that the community members don't like that option. Yeah. So simple, simple as that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy CEO. Uh, members, any further questions? Okay, there being none, um, we won't move on to 5.4 because that was withdrawn pending um, the federal budget, which I'm sure you're all very excited uh, to see what's in there. Uh, so we'll go to 5.5, proposed event in the Adelaide Parklands, Adelaide Festival 2021. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I have a conflict of interest on this one, Deputy Lord Mayor, as I'm a board member of the Adelaide Festival Corporation. So I will leave for the time being. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd, I'd remind you it's not necessary, but uh, if you wish to, uh, I, we did set a precedent um, to take care of councillors Sims and Mackie. So um, uh, if, if you wish to, um, I assume that's a material conflict. It Lord is a material Mayor, conflict. Or it, it would be a material conflict at council next week. Okay, all right, thank you. Do you just want to turn off your camera, yep. Lord Mayor? Okay, members, any further points? And just governance, if you could just record that the Lord Mayor's left the room, uh, flagging a future conflict of interest in council next week. Uh, and I've got Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Chair. And look, may I commend uh, the Lord Mayor for um, declaring a conflict of committee? I actually think that is the appropriate thing to do. Uh, and I commend that action to others. In respect of 5.5, can I ask the administration, and I do apologise, I haven't looked up the AFLIM, but what are the closing hours um, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday for Elder Park in the AFLIM? Very specific question. Uh, you can take um, on note if you need. No, no, we've got the, the phlegm here. Um, it's 3 a.m. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday public holidays, midnight on weekdays. However, council approval will be required for any new event application. The use of this site, which proposes to operate beyond midnight, which is why we brought it in. Okay. Um, so um, where it says in the information paper, prepared by the administration that the event meets the Elder Park 26 event criteria, it does not in that the weeknight closing hour is midnight and it is proposed it should be 2 a.m. in this proposal come before council, is that correct? Uh, they're trading to midnight councillor on weekdays and 2 a.m. on weekends. <coughs> uh, well, Friday's a weekday, though. I think we classify that as a weekend. Okay. Friday into Saturday. Into Saturday. Yeah, it's Friday night <coughs> so from midnight to 2 a.m. on Saturday. Well, okay. <coughs> but if that was the case, um, then Sunday night trading into Monday morning would be out. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Thanks, members, any further points? If not, we will, last chance. No, we will go to 5.6, regulated tree removal, Wellington Square. Uh, please raise your electronic hand if you wish to speak on this one or raise, raise any questions or comments, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, could I ask the administration for the Arborist report before the uh, meeting of council? Directors, is anyone? Hello. Uh, sorry, can the question be repeated, please? Uh, Councillor Martin's just seeking the Arborist report <coughs> provided before council next week. I attempted to get it on the link. I attempted to get it on the link and couldn't get it. I mm. would appreciate it if someone could send it to me. Sure, no problem. We can email, email that directly, but uh, if the link isn't working for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. And I would just highlight the um, quality of the Arborist report was um, applauded at, um, at APLA when it came through. Uh, members, any further? No. Um, Lord Mayor, I, I'm sure you're not listening in because we were discussing the Adelaide Festival, but um, you know, if you are back, your camera isn't on, uh, just FYI. Uh, members, thank you. We'll move on to uh, 5.7, which is the City of Adelaide Annual Report 2019-2020. Any questions or comments on this? Councillor Martin, thank you. Uh, Chair, I'm happy for others to go first. Members, any questions on this? It is a statutory report that we're required to produce by law. No, Phil, I think um, uh, I think you're the Lone Ranger just on this one. <coughs> okay, look, I won't um, uh, waste the time of members, but look, uh, could I ask the administration um, if they could help me understand the employment numbers um, in response to a question on notice on the 11th of August, um, our the staff complement was uh, 783, and yet, uh, uh, according to the information supplied, um, it was 750 at June 30th. That is, um, there had been an increase in numbers, and I'm, I'm just wondering uh, why our staff numbers would be going up when we were making people redundant, and therefore whether those figures are in fact accurate, not in respect of trainees or labour hire, but in respect of permanent and fixed term employees. And I would really appreciate some advice in regard to that. Um, the only matter about which I- Sorry, was that, a, was that a question you wanted an answer to, Phil, or? Well, look, uh, uh, I would expect the, the administration would ask to take that on notice, um, but if they wish to answer it now, I'm happy. Well, I'll just, we'll just check first. Directors, please put your camera on. Thank you. Um, the numbers um, in the annual report are um, as at the 30th of June. Um, so the yes, numbers I that were provided to you on the 11th of August would have been obviously numbers as uh, at. Uh, no, I but understand. I'll need to go back and just check. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the point that I'm making is that at the 30th of June, there, there were 750 uh, full-time permanent fixed-term uh, equivalents. Um, uh, five weeks later, uh, there were an additional uh, 33 full-time employees uh, while we were making people redundant. And therefore, I wonder, is that figure there correct or is there some other explanation I haven't seen? That's um, yeah, we'll check. It could be headcount versus full-time equivalent. So we'll just make sure that, um, that we follow up for you and we'll send that out uh, to next week. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. And, and uh, my, my other question is uh, related to overseas and interstate travel. Uh, could the CEO uh, tell me what was the budget um, for staff travel, international, interstate and intrastate uh, for the financial year 19 to 20? Through you, um, Chair, look, I might take that on notice as well, just so I can provide you with an accurate figure, unless Claire, you can assist with that. Uh, through the presiding member, the budget was $223,000. Uh, and uh, would it be correct uh, to say that that amount uh, was expended uh, during the course of the financial year, even though um, all travel ceased in February? Uh, no, so we didn't spend a total of $223,000 on travel. Um, last financial year. But it was in excess of two in excess uh, of two hundred thousand. 
No, no, it was um, 181,000. 181,000 for uh, staff travel. And uh, elected member travel on top of that would have pushed it well over 200,000. Um, okay. And um, I noticed that um, our staff have been uh, traveling um, interstate and uh, it is proposed to travel interstate again um, in the coming weeks uh, while there's been a ban on travel. And those events have just been for uh, meetings of capital city mayors, uh, which I understand have been held by Zoom. And in another case, to speak at a local government parking summit uh, next month. Uh, do, do we have a policy on uh, our staff moving about? Do they quarantine? Um, I notice also that it's proposed that the director of growth is going to New Zealand uh, which is not a destination open to ordinary South Australians at this time. Through the chair, look, I'm not aware of those proposed travel um, matters that you just referred to, Councillor. Well, one of them concerns uh, you, according to the report, CEO, that on the 18th of September to the 19th of September, you travelled to Canberra. Sorry, if I could just clarify, um, Councillor Martin, it's a list of all the travel undertaken from the 1st of July last year to the 30th of June this year. So it's 1920 travel already undertaken, not proposed. So these are typographical errors. When it says 18th of the 9th, 2020 to the 19th of 9th, 2020, you mean 18th of the 9th, 2019? Correct. Ah, okay. Yeah, apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, it's all right. Um, that, that answers all questions. Um, and it is clear uh, that we do know when we're coming and going. Correct. And it's always good to have that extra proofreading. I think well, I think 10 of us have read this cover to cover, but there's always something. It's a big document. So thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you members. Any further points? <clears throat> if not, we'll go on to the committee updated terms of reference. Any comments or queries on this one? Happy for others to go first, Chair. I think others are happy for you to go first, Phil, but it looks. Okay, uh, look, I'm, kick us off. All right, look, I'm uh, concerned about, uh, and I'm just moving to the correct page. Um, the proposed amendments in regard to decision making are 8.17 forward. Um, no, I'm not. I'm concerned about 8.32 items close to the public. Um, where it's proposed that forthwith um, it is possible for matters to be heard in confidence, that is, in secret, um, if a decision is made presumably um, by the presiding uh, member or the CEO that the matter would cause embarrassment to the council or the committee concerned or to council members or employees of council, uh, cause a loss of confidence in the council or the committee, involve a discussion of a matter that is controversial or make the council susceptible to adverse criticism. Um, why, why are we casting the net so widely that um, just a controversial matter means that it has to be heard in confidence or uh, a matter that could cause embarrassment to the council, given that the council um, does feel embarrassment quite a lot, actually. Um, wh why are these things now grounds for making subjects secret? I might go straight to Rudy on that, as the Manager of Governance. Thank you, Thank Rudy. Thank you. Um, through the presiding member, um, Councillor Martin, it is actually uh, quite the opposite. Um, it is irrelevant in the consideration uh, to uh, go into confidence whether um, something may cause embarrassment, may cause loss of confidence. 
may involve a discussion that's controversial with the council area or may make the council susceptible to adverse criticism. So it's rather the opposite. You cannot say we need to move into, com into confidence because it may cause embarrassment. What this um, section is saying is quite the opposite. That is not a ground for confidentiality and that's also backed up by the legislation. Uh, look, I, I acknowledge that and I uh, confess embarrassment. I have misread that as well. So it is okay for us to talk about matters that cause embarrassment to the council or the committee that do cause a loss of confidence in the council that involve a matter that's controversial and that makes the council susceptible to adverse criticism. That's, that's good news. Within the requirements of the code of conduct, of course, but yes, indeed. Yeah, no, that's really good news. Thank you, Rudy. And so that little display field, that didn't have to be in confidence, embarrassing as it was. Oh, no, no, no. Look, I, I have uh, no concern about embarrassment. Right. We all have our one. moments. Um, Councillor Sims. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I guess one of the things I'd like to know is how long it's intended that this new um, approach will be in, in operation um, for um, and also and forgive me because it is probably in in the document I'm trying to find it um, is there reference to the use of um, mute and those sorts of um, functions by um, the chair and the circumstances in which they can be used um through the chair, uh, there's no reference to that because that is also dependent on the availability of those features on the technical platform we're using. And these things are evolving continuously as, as we see indeed. Um, so that is uh, not the case, but in answer to your first question for how long is this gonna continue? Uh, at the moment, we're still operating under the uh, direction of the minister around the COVID uh, emergency declaration. Uh, as soon as that ceases, then um, the committee meetings can continue to go online as a result of council's decision on the 14th of July and um, the uh, report in front of you, which will be going to council, is basically setting um, those uh, terms of reference uh, aligned with what we had under the COVID regime. So is there specific criteria or circumstances in which the meetings should be online or is it just at the discretion of um, the committee chair. Um, through the presiding member, the uh, decision of council linked that to the discretion of the CEO in consultation with the presiding member. I guess um, without entering into the debate, but my view would be that there should be consideration given to clear public health grounds so that if there is an outbreak or a, um, a member of a council who is um, unwell, um, then that would be a, a reason to um, potentially conduct um, Zoom. But if if it's simply just because, you know, it might be hard for people to get back from work in time or, or something like that, um, then maybe that's a, a different consideration. Is that something that's been considered in um, drafting this? Um, going by the, by the council resolution, uh, it did specify that it had to be at the discretion of the CEO in consultation with the presiding member. The decision of council made on the 14th of July did not link that to uh, reasoning of, of uh, health or uh, other uh, circumstances. So theoretically, the um, chair in consultation with the CEO could say, you know, I, I, it's going to be easier for me to... Um, hypothetically, you know, conduct the meeting from my workplace or something like that, and we'll, we'll just accommodate that. There's nothing to, to prevent that. Under the wording of the current council decision, it is the discretion of the CEO in consultation with the presiding members. So whatever grounds they may have available to them to come to that judgment call, that's not specified in the council decision. Okay, thank you. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm genuinely confused now. Um, I accept that Jesse uh, proposed and the, the council majority endorsed a motion that all meetings 
of committee would be held uh, by Zoom uh, at the discretion of the presiding member and the chief executive. However, the chief executive has previously told us that we meet by Zoom uh, only because of the amendment to the Local Government Act by the, local, the then Local Government Minister to provide for electronic meetings and that the moment that emergency health declaration uh, is revoked, so does our capacity to meet by Zoom. If that is not the case, which part of the Local Government Act is Rudy relying on to say that we will continue to meet beyond the revocation of any emergency health declaration? Through the presiding member, the Local Government Act always has provided for the ability for committee meetings to be held online. Um, so that uh, has historically been created to allow remote uh, council areas to have their committee meetings without significant travel uh, to be involved. Uh, subject to resolution of council, that can then be enabled. This is for committee meetings. And that's exactly what has occurred on the 14th of July, where council approved the use of Zoom uh, as an online platform for committee meetings uh, as a continuation post COVID. Um, the ministerial notice did not make it mandatory for online meetings to occur, but of course there were um, directions issued by the commissioner uh, of the police for public attendance, which resulted in uh, the council taking on uh, the process of online meetings during the uh, times of the, uh, the pandemic when required to do so. Uh, from the 1st of July, however, those uh, measures started to ease and in accordance with the restrictions relevant at that point in time, um, Council resumed uh, its, its meetings in, in person from time to time. So uh, I'd still like to know which part of the Local Government Act permits meetings of a capital city council, not remote councils, a capital city uh, a council by remote means? As listed in the uh, executive summary, uh, Councillor Martin, it re references section 89 of the Local Government Act. Section uh, 89 of the Local Government Act has been there uh, before, so that's nothing new. No, no, I understand that, Rudy. Is section 89, which part? I'm happy for you to send that to me by email. I will uh, send that to you via email, but uh, section 89 is, um, is the one to refer to. I'm happy to read it out. I've got it right in front of me. Yeah, you. that's great. Yep, so proceeding of council committees, um, subject to this act, a procedure to be observed in relation to the conduct of meetings of a council committee will be um, insofar um, the, as the procedure is not prescribed by regulation or determined by the council as determined by the council committee itself. Um, so um, that's the proceedings of council committee uh, proceedings to be set. And that's what we're relying on. That's correct. And that's what other councils are also relying on to allow their uh, online meetings of the committee. Thank you. Could, uh, could you send that to me? I will uh, after the meeting, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Members? <clears throat> okay, 5.8 is done. We will move on to 6 uh, and 6.1, which is exclusion uh, of the public uh, to consider in confidence now. Uh, I will be doing uh, each of these items separately. So that's uh, 7, 1, 8, 1 and 8, 2. We'll go to item 7, 1 first, 88 O'Connell status update. Um, uh, I seek a mover and a seconder for this. Thank you, Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Noel. Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Noel? Members? Yes. Councillor Martin? Um, look, I may I speak? Yes, yes, I'll just yes. Look, may, may I ask members not to agree to hear this matter in confidence? 
Um, we have been waiting a very long time in North Adelaide to understand what's happening at that site. Uh, the Lord Mayor uh, sent a circular to uh, residents this time last year saying it'll only be a couple of months and I'll be making an announcement. There have been several similar flyers in the last uh, uh, 10 months and still nothing. Uh, and it really is reaching a point where people are starting to speculate that nothing will happen on the site. And in fact, only on the weekend, one resident uh, told me nothing would ever happen. It's a doomed site. Uh, and you people, you council people are responsible. I mean, that sort of thing is rampant in the community. And partly as, as because- Martin, Can we just bring it back to, um, back to relevance, please? It is, it is. Uh, I, I'm saying that because there has been no information whatever from council about this site, other than a promise a year ago that there would be an announcement in the next few weeks, if not months, um, there is growing disquiet. So it really does need to be heard in public so that people can understand what's happening. And I will not be voting for this matter to be heard in confidence. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, any other contributions? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Summed up, put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Uh, members, we now move on to the uh, exclusion order for item 8.1, the renewal of recycled water service, award of contract. I seek a mover and a seconder for this. Thank you, Councillor Noel, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Noel, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. No, members. If not, I'll go to Councillor Noel to sum up. Thank you, Councillor Noel. I put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And that takes us to 8.2, uh, the initiating uh, initiating the representation review. Uh, I'll seek a mover and a seconder for this. Moved by Councillor Noel, seconded by Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Councillor Noel. Do you wish to speak? Councillor Mackey. Members, if not, we'll go to Councillor Noel to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, Councillor Noel. To the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, now, given we're on the 